Today, our champion, John Lang of Abington, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Steve Vadney of Claremont, New Hampshire, on Candleton Bowling. Oh. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again Ken, to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and as always, for the whole crew, we're glad that you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts, for three strings of Candleton Bowling, total pinball determining our winner. Each take home a permanent souvenir. They are provided by Week's Trophy of Lynn. Each uh, will take home some money. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. $700 goes to the winner, $350 to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously, if they tie, we would split that at $25 apiece. Many other opportunities for our bowlers to go home a little bit richer. You're pretty familiar with them, but I'll remind you, I know they are. Let's not waste any more time. Let's talk to today's bowlers, shall we? <clears throat> Steve, Hi. nice to see you back. And uh, I'm looking at some of these things. 125 average, very yeah. nice, huh? And uh, 488 high triple. You're, you're a little on a little hot streak right now, are you? Well, a little bit. It's been a while since I've been here, but uh, I've been throwing the ball pretty good as of late. Well, then we'll, we'll you see. Th I'll, we'll see today. Would you say that maybe experience helps and so forth? You get better with experience? Because I'm wondering about my golf game. See, oh, that's de why <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a young Turk, as they call him, right here. And uh, he is the newest member of the, the uh, or leader of the Langs gang because uh, his uh, uncle was on here, Barry, for a long, long time. You're off to a flying start, you son of a gun. Two, two big wins in a row. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about making it three? That'd be nice. Is that all you're going to say? Yep. <laughs> you don't want to jinx yourself. No. All right. Good luck to you, and good luck to you, Steve. And we'll get underway right after this. We are underway with our challenger, Steve Adney, Claremont, New Hampshire. And a few more tumbled. He's left with now. One, three, and seven. Oh, good effort. Got the one and three. Got them all. Now as a piece of wood has just rolled across. Our challenger, Steve Vadney, now rolling in the fifth box of the opening string. Half Worcester left side as he punched out the two and eight. Still has two pins standing, the four and five with wood in between. It's a 10. At the start of the show, uh, while talking to Steve, I mentioned his league average was 125 and his high triple 488. He also has a high single of 197. Now he has four horsemen on the right side to convert. A little too full on the head pin. Ten. We had a winner last week of $850 in our home viewer jackpot, so we've started all over again with 50. However, that high-low jackpot is still climbing. It's up to $1,450. Is it going to be a delayed strike? No. Ten pin is still standing, although a piece of wood did roll over to it. Previous to that, the three and the nine had toppled. So he has one pin with two pieces of wood in front of it. That's the ten pin. And he has it. For another spare. Al Giglio keeping score on the electronic scoreboard as he usually does. Keep Williams on the big board. Seven is the fill. It's two, four, and six. Two, four on the left, six over on the right. There are a couple of pieces of wood. One has decided to stay just to the left of the two pin. They should be the four pin. And uh, the other is rolling back and forth. Thank you. 
He got just one. The four pin. It's a nine. Twelve pin lead for our defending champion through six. So close to getting a strike, Steve Vadney. The five pin standing, a piece of wood dropped right beside it, but did not knock it down. Now he has it for a spare. Spread Eagle, he gets just four and leaves the two wings. One of the most frustrating of all results when you are trying to fill and you come right in on the head pin and punch out just the four. That time, the four pins is what I said. That time he just got the four pin itself and he leaves it a seven. Our crew today, Ken Sullivan, Bob Hackler, Bob Armitage, Skip Peabody. And a swipe for John Lang. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee. Phil Rubin is our producer and director. First bonus call. That gets him seven and leaves a triangle. There's Ralph right at the lob line. Picture of concentration. No, he didn't get the triangle. He got two thirds of it. It's a 10. Now we go into the final two boxes, 20 pins apart, the lead going to our defending champion, John Lang. Here is his challenger, Steve Vadney, Claremont, New Hampshire. Looked like he was gonna get more. It was a nice right pocket hit. One pin standing. And down it goes for a 10. 90. Again, nice right pocket hit, but not quite as much action as perhaps one would expect. He's got a triangle that's made up of the four, seven, and eight with wood in front of it. And it went. Spare in the tenth. And strike on top of that. So that's a way to finish up. Now John Lang, up by 20. It's a six pin drop, there'll be no wood to help, and he's looking at the two, four, five, and seven. Nope, got the five, that's all. It's a nine.
Two pins standing, the two and the seven. The lob cost him one pin. It was the seven which he knocked down after lobbing the ball. So it is an eight. One seventeen, which uh, of course in neither case did the bowler roll his average. However, the fifty dollars in bonus money for winning the first string goes to our defending champion, John Lang. One seventeen to one ten. Middle string, our defending champion leads it off, and let's see if he can do what he's been doing all along, and that is marking in the first box. Not that way. He hit that football line. And it really bounced off to the right. Three and five are the two pins. He comes back to make a ten. Corners are full, but he has a lot of wood in between. He's going to look this one over. You can see that he's squinting a little as he looks down there, trying to figure out how many pieces of wood there are, what the configuration is. There are three, and it does look as if this could bust. Let's watch. Yes, sir. It did look as if they were in a good position to have one go to the left and one go to the right and to take care of those corners. Now he has the corners full, but he doesn't have quite the. He has two pieces of wood, and uh, they're not in as favorable a position as they were for John. Well, he tried to bang it off the sidewall and have it come back across, but it didn't hit it quite hard enough. Ten. Little over seven years since Steve was here. Three pins, it's the three, five, and six. That's what he's looking at. He had a good little streak when he came on. Nope. Got two thirds of that triangle. He beat Rich Padroli. Then in succession, defeated Tom Surrett, then George Miro, then Al Gallant, finally lost to Charlie Dutras. John Lang. Nine is the fill on his spear, and he has the nine pin to pick up for another. Waiting for some wood, which uh, it, it, it can be dangerous, I'll tell you. Let's see if it's going to be a roadblock or can he get by it? Nope, it was a roadblock. Now I got it. There are some who play different games of bowling who deride the fact that uh, the wood is left on the lanes here, but it doesn't always help. Sometimes it prevents the bowler as it did there in making the shot. And even when it's there, you have to make some difficult angles that you have to play. All right, he has three pins standing. It's a two, four, seven. Two pieces of wood in back of those three. He missed the two pin. Ralph calls time, Ralph Stewart, because it appears that that is going to come 
near enough to the bowler to get by the deadwood line. It did, so it has to be cleared. To nine. When Steve Badney was on the last time, uh, his scores were 380, 405, 352, 383, and when he lost, he rolled a 377. Two and four. And yes, he has him. Bear in the third. He looked like he was going to get a little more out of that, but he has no wood to help, and he's looking at two, four, seven on the left, six and ten on the right. Oh, nice try. He took out the three on the left and the ten, but couldn't get the six. He has it now for a 10. All right, after four boxes in the first string and in the middle string, we take a check on the scoreboard. After one, it was John Lang 117, Steve Abney 110, and here now after four boxes of the middle string, it is Lang 48 and Badney 45. We're at the halfway point. Fifth box middle string, our defending champion, John Lang of Abington, Massachusetts. Bounced it off the football line again, but this time it went down the middle. Left, however, the seven and ten. Two pieces of wood in front of the ten pin, and one of them was still rolling. Now it has settled down. Good try. He flew one piece of wood over, but it went in the pit behind the seven rather than hitting it. But he gave it a good effort. have to reset. He, he flew that one out past the lob line, and uh, as you know and as you've seen, Ralph Stewart sits right at the lob line. It's right between his feet, and he watches out on that lane to see where that ball lands. Second ball now in this box. One, three, seven, and eight, no wood. That's what he's looking at. It's a seven box. Now challenger, Steve Adney. Steve is employed by Sturm Ruger Company, Incorporated. Is it good? Yes, it is. Slow motion strike. Piece of wood went over and toppled the 10. First ball. Ralph Stewart taking a check on the wood. He's looking at the three and four, which of course are not exactly parallel, but so he has wood to the left side and another piece of wood on an angle about where the head pin would be. Let's see whether, what he can do with three, four. Yes, he got it. Well, as you saw a little peek at the scoreboard, it's a tie. 
And uh, that is in in the number of boxes so far, although it will be broken by anything that Steve Badney gets as a fill on that spare he just made. John Lang is looking at the two, five, eight, plus the 10. Nice shot. That's that side saddle triangle made up of the two, five, and eight. And uh, he got he got those three and then made the spare. Missed the head pin that time. Five is the fill. One, two, four, six and ten. Two pieces of wood. One directly behind the four, one in between the two clusters. Almost pulled it off, but the ten didn't go. All right, it's a 10. Two marks in a row for our challenger, Steve Badney. Five, so he is opposite a seven box. And basically, that's a pickup of eight. Nope, the five pin would not go down for another mark, which would have been worth $50 in bonus money. Three pin lead at the moment for the challenger, Steve Adney. He puts it in the pocket sometimes, and you think he's going to get a strike or a nine pin drop, and he winds up with a split. In this instance, it's a six, nine. Oh, oh what a shot. Oh, what a beauty. Yes, yes, yes. What a pretty, pretty. Oh, one of the prettiest spares you want to see. John Lang. Two, seven, and ten. And Wood. Two pieces of wood in back. They have stopped rolling. Goes for the two. And that's all he got. Seven and ten still there. It's a nine. Ninety-nine going into the tenth box. His average is one nineteen. He fired it, hoping for the strike. Now he's got four and ten. There are three pieces of wood back there. One of them parallel to the pit and, and two that are slightly perpendicular. Yes! Boy, two pretty spares. One made by Steve Badney and uh, another one now made by John Lang. 109. Plus this. One eighteen. Good finish in the final box. Of course, neither of his first two strings have uh, been quite up to uh, his average. That came close, just one pin less. Now, Steve Adney. And Steve Adney gets a nine pin drop on his spare. It's the five pin. It's 
going to be difficult. He's got a piece of wood pointing right at him. Can he get it? Nope. There was a roadblock. Though it's a 10. John Lang had a seven pin lead coming into the middle string. Right now, we'll have to see what will happen here. It says one box to go. Steve Badney, nice hit, winds up with five and ten. The old Woolworth split and no wood. Oh, so close. He was just trying to skin it and flip it over there to get the ten. Now he goes for a nine. One twenty-eight. So it's a three-pin difference and. Our challenger is in the lead by three after two strings, and he gets $50 in bonus money for winning this string, 128 to 118. Overcame the seven pins that uh, the lead was for our defending champion. Now leads by three, 238 to 235. Here we go, boys and girls. Third string, three pins separating our bowlers. And Steve Badney, our challenger, throws a strike. Not with that one. That one went off to the right. Just four on the first ball. Everything clustered in the middle. He's going for the head pin and the... Two. And he got everything but the four pin. So the fill is nine. Quick check on our true value leaders for our championship show, the $20,000 live show. Peter Surrett in first place with a 453. Jack Quinn with a 437. Tom Surrett with a 422. Gary Casey with a 418. And Janet Pock still there with a 408. And Jack Lang comes back almost a strike. He leaves just the 10 pin. Going at the 10 pin. Yes, he has it. So each bowler now has marked in the first box of this deciding third string. Next. Half Worcester, right? Just two. That was the three and the nine that were punched out. Waiting for some wood to get out of the way. Rolling slowly to a stop. There are three pieces, but they're to his left. He has it for a 10. The big difference there, of course, was the two-pin fill for John Lang and a nine-pin fill for Steve Adney. Looking at a triangle, this is five, excuse me, three, five, and six. Or if you want left to right, looking at them, it's, it would go five, three, six. But, nope, got the three and five. See a lot of those triangles missed. A 10. Two pull. Three, six, seven, nine, and 10.
looking at the rolling wood. One piece, sir, I've right about where the five would be that now I guess it's going to settle down just a little to the right of that spot. Got everything except the two pin. It's still there. John Lang, our defending champion, try to make it three in a row. Nine pin drop and a piece of wood right in front of the four. Yes. Fair in the third. He's opposite a 10, so the 10 pin deficit that he faces will be erased somewhat. Some of it will be erased by, well, not what he wanted. Just three. He almost came back and got everything. He was facing four horsemen left side, five, nine, and excuse me, five, eight, and 10, and he got everything except the five. It's a 10. Six pins now. This is Steve Badney, Claremont, New Hampshire, today's challenger. Four horsemen right side, no wood to help. Two full on the head pin. It's a nine. Hoping to duplicate, hoping to get a strike, fired it right at the head pin, but got a spread eagle instead. Well, he just knocked down everything except the seven pin. Action, but he still left one, three, and seven. And the wood is to the right of and slightly in back of the three pin. Try to split it. No, he had to. He got the three, but not number one. It's an eight. Cut the challenger's lead to five, however, has rolled an eight box himself and is opposite a strike. There's the first bonus ball by Steve Badney. He gets six. And the four pins that are remaining are together. He's got three, five, six, a piece of wood, and then 10, if you can picture that. 
Three. Amazing. Six didn't go. That looked uh, as if it was going to be almost, almost a sure spare. Now he makes it for a 10. On lane three, everything down except the 10 pin, but there's a piece of wood that's very tough right in front of it because it's almost perpendicular to it, but it's got a slight angle toward the gutter. It's gonna be tough. Got it! All right, nice shot. That was dangerous, dangerous. Very nice shot. All right. Right now, our defending champion, John Lang, this young man, has a lot of work to do. And that's not the way he wants to do it, by punching out. He punched out three pins, the one, five, and nine. Everything else still standing, no wood to help. That takes care of the right. Now he's got four pins over on the left. Two, four, seven, and eight. It's a nine. That's opposite a 10. Seventeen pins behind and opposite a spare by his challenger. Thin hit to the right side. One and ten still there. It's a 10, as the 10 pin toppled. Steve Badney. This is a fill on the spare he made in the eighth. Oh, big, big, big nine fill. Seven pins still up, but he's got wood right in front of it. Little dangerous. He went for the wood, but uh, more to the right than one would expect. And for an instant, it appeared that he might miss it. But he hasn't. One, two, four, eight. Yes, yes. $50 in bonus money. Three marks in a row for Steve Badney. All right, ten on it. And a strike on it. Fine, fine finish for Steve Adney. 141. Three seventy-nine. John Lang having a little difficulty in getting the big hit. Almost came back with a spare. Ten pins still there. It's a nine. And so Steve Badney is our new champion as John Lang was unable to make it three in a row. Steve also picks up another $50 for winning the third string. So, 
we do have a new champion. So the final score is Vadney 379 and Lang 336. We had a winner last week of $850, so obviously we emptied out the bin and we're starting all over again at $50. Today's is $715. 10 either side of that wins $50, but even if it's nowhere near that, that person will be rewarded with a handsome gift from the Parker Pen Company. I don't want to, uh, let's shake that one more time and see if we can get these guys down here. All right. 715 is our number. And uh, this one comes from Seabrook, New Hampshire. Phyllis Brown, and her guess is 730. So it will be uh, $100 next week. This thing is really, Steve, there have been a lot of guys shooting at this thing, and uh, it's now up to 1450. How about knocking it off, huh? <laughs> Oh, okay, John. All right, John and Steve, would you come over here, please? John first. John, you knew you were going to get the smaller trophy sometime, but oh, yeah. you were hoping that it would be a few more weeks, I know. Yes. Uh, but you, you had to find three weeks and $350 in, uh, for, for being our runner-up, and uh, let's see, uh, $50 in bonus money, that's all. Another handsome trophy from Week's Trophy of Lynn. Uh, you, you wore your, your uh, orange laces today. Sure did. They're, they're the lucky ones, aren't they? Yep. they supposed to... <laughs> they're not coming out. <laughs> all right. Okay, Thank nice you. to have you on. Hope to see you back again soon. Thank you. Okay, Steve, the last time you were on, you were on for five weeks. Are you going to plan to beat that? Oh, I'd like to. It <laughs> yeah. a nice There's a nice thing. third string. It's kind of nice to come from behind in a third string like that, huh? Really? Well, John, uh, he left the door open the first string there. I was a little out of sync there in the first game, and fortunately, John was too, so we didn't get too far apart. Well, you did pretty well. $700 plus $200 in bonus money, the handsome trophy from Week's Trophy of Lynn. And we're going to send a guy with a little experience against you next week, Bob Kelly of Marlboro. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good luck to you, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.